Hi, it's Adam with webstarts.com. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to create your very own photography website using webstarts. I like to use webstarts to create my website it's because it's easy to use, it's completely flexible and 100% capable. All right, let's dive in and see how to create a website. But before we do that, be sure to tap the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. That way you'll be the first to find out when I release a new video on web design, internet marketing, search engine optimization, and similar topics. Let's go to webstarts.com and click on Get Started, it's free. In the next step, you're going to choose a design. All of the templates are 100% customizable and can be changed at any time, so select whatever one you would like. If you would like, you can click on the photography category and then just select one of the photography templates. In the next step, of course, you're going to need to sign up for your website. And you're going to enter your email address and your name, and you're going to select the password. And then you're going to click continue or sign up. And one last thing, we're going to need to enter the phone number and verify. Once you've verified your phone number, now it's time to pick a web address. You can pick a free .webstarts.com address or you can enter a top level domain name like your very own .com in this field over here. If you do select to go that route, it will require you to upgrade to a paid subscription before that domain name will resolve to your website. So for this demo, I'm just going to stick with the free account. So I'm going to select a web address over here. If you want, you can also click this button to choose a web address later. All right, my site's been generated and I'm greeted with this welcome video. I recommend that you check that out. It shows you the basic things that you need to know to get around web starts. I'm going to close it out for now though. And now I'm ready to edit the pages of my website. So I can just click on edit site in order to do that. And that opens up what's called the page editor. Now the template that I selected already has a photo gallery on it. So I can select the photo gallery and then you can see that I can drag and drop any element of my website or any element that I want to appear on my web page. And then I can just double click if I want to change the photos that are in my photo gallery. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is create a photo gallery. And so I select to replace the existing photos. I'm going to upload some photos from a photo album called wedding photos that I have on my local computer. All right, so I'm gonna select those photos and then they're going to start uploading. So you can see that I selected 48 photos. That's gonna take a couple of minutes to upload. So I'm gonna wait for those to upload to what's called my file manager here and then I will show you how to add those to the photo gallery. Okay, great. I've uploaded all 48 of my wedding photos to my file manager, and now I want to add those photos to my photo gallery. So I'm gonna to click to select the ones that I'd like to add. I wanna add all of them, so I'm just going to hold down the shift key, select them all, and then click insert file. Then you can see this will populate the photo gallery. And then in the photo gallery, I can drag to reorder each of the photos just like such. I can also delete a photo. So for example, if I feel like these photos are too similar, I could just delete one or this one, for example. There's also a little pencil icon you can click to add a title and description for each one of the photos. I'm not gonna do that for this video. When you're ready, click update, and then the photo gallery itself will be updated with all of the photos. So that's quite a few photos in my photo gallery. I have 48 there, and you can see that it's separated into three columns, and that creates an awkward row at the bottom here that I don't like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually uh, divide these into 
uh, columns that are going to give an even number of photos at the bottom here. So let's see if I can go ahead and just make them into two columns. That allows me to create a good looking uh, layout. Now I can also drag and drop this photo gallery wherever I want it to appear on my website and I can select it and then I can use this smart handle just to increase the size or I can just increase the height by using this regular handle. But by using this smart handle, what I do is I push all of the other elements that appear on this page below the photo gallery down the page without causing things to shuffle around, move around, that kind of stuff. I'm going to take a break and just save the changes that I made. I like to do that just in case I get kicked off the internet, my power goes out, that kind of thing. So now you can see that I've added a photo gallery to my web page. And when somebody goes to that page, naturally they're going to be able to click on that photo gallery and peruse through all of the full versions of the photos. I can change the styling or appearance of the photo gallery by clicking on it to select it and then click this choose effect icon and then customize style. And what this will do is allow me to do things like adjust that image spacing between each photo. So you can see that I'm doing that there. And I can do things like add a border if I want, I can round the corners and I can even add a bunch of different effects down here. I'm not gonna get into all of these right now, but basically you can preview those effects and those are different types of rollover effects. So it means when somebody hovers their cursor above the photo, they're going to see those effects applied. Uh, here you can click on the settings icon and this will allow you to either crop or center your photos. For this demonstration, I'm using the crop option. I just think that looks better. And then we already visited the columns option. You can change the number of columns. So if I wanted to have a lot of columns, I could of course increase the number of columns or decrease the number of columns as well. Okay, I also want to add a slideshow to my website. So what I'm gonna do is once again, save the changes to my page. And I'm not gonna share this right now. And now I'm gonna create a second page. So I click new page. I'm going to create a blank page. I'm gonna call it slideshows just for this demonstration. So I enter slideshows, click create page. And then you can see my header and footer are added to the page. I'm gonna click the guideline at the footer and push it down the page a little bit just to create some space. I'm then gonna move over to the left sidebar and I'm going to click add and I'm going to select slideshow. And then you can see the slideshow modal looks similar to the photo gallery modal and I can click add images. And there are my images that I previously uploaded to the file manager. Now I'm just gonna select some of these images by the way, you can hold down the command key if you just want to select specific images and then click on them and then click insert. So now all of these images are in my slideshow. So you can see my slideshow is entered onto my page. I want it to be a little bit taller. So I use the handle to drag down the page. And just like we did with the photo gallery, you can use the smart handle to push all the elements that are below the slideshow down the page while increasing the height of the slideshow. You can double click on the slideshow to change things like the order or the images that are shared within the slideshow. And of course you can delete the various slides the same way that you could with the photo gallery as well. Now, one thing that's different about the slideshow than the photo gallery is this little hyperlink icon that allows you to link each photo that's in the slideshow wherever you would like to link to. So you can link to another page on your website. You can link to another website altogether, an email address, a phone number, a specific file. That's good if you, for example, want to allow somebody to download the photo, you could simply select the photo so that when they click on it, it will download it to their computer. You can create an anchor link that just sends someone to a specific place on one of the pages of your website. So you could select, for example, the photos page and then send somebody to a place where you've put an anchor on that page, which we haven't done yet. And then lastly, you can 
select an action, like scroll to the top of the page, launch an image pop-up, or a video pop-up. So for example, if you had a YouTube video that corresponded with that wedding photography, maybe you want to link to it when you're ready to just click create link. We're not gonna do that for now. I'm just going to select the option to update my slideshow and then show you a few other things. One thing I like about the slideshow and the photo gallery as well is that you can make it full width so that no matter what screen resolution somebody's looking at it on, it will always take up the full width of the page. So for example, if I save right now and then I go over and click on the view site button, I can see my photography website with the slideshow on top. And when I adjust the width of my page, the width of the slideshow will adjust accordingly. All right, going back into the page editor and clicking on the slideshow, click on the settings icon. And here you can do things like change the style of the control arrows that are used. There are several different styles. You can see what they look like just as you go through and uh, select them. You can also control the transition effect. So if you don't like the slide, maybe you like the fade better. That just fades from one photo to the other. We, there are also some other options like mask, wave, flow, and scale. You can adjust the speed at which the slides change. You can select whether you want those images to be cropped or centered or stretched. Of course, cropped looks the best in my opinion, so I usually use that one. You can have those images come in partially or boxed. I like the boxed look. And you can even have them slide in vertically instead of horizontally. So that's one of the options as well. Down here, you can create space between your slides uh, just by selecting the appropriate amount of pixels there. And you can also choose to autoplay or loop the slideshow, which are both selected by default. Just gonna close that out. Okay, so far I showed you how to display your photos in both photo galleries and slideshows on your website. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to protect those photos. So if somebody comes to your website and you don't want them to download those photos without getting your permission, you might want to do what's called right-click disable. And you can do that right here on the left sidebar, click manage and then just select right-click disable, save your changes. And when you go to view your site and somebody right-clicks on one of the images, you get this function disabled message. So that prevents people from being able to download those photos without your permission. All right, I'm gonna move back over here and I'm gonna slide my little bubble back into the corner so you can get a good look at things. All right, the next thing that I want to show you is how you can take all of your high resolution images and you can put them into a zip file, then upload those. And that way you can actually link to that zip file and allow your client to download all of their high resolution images. So if they pay you, or if you're just allowing them to have access to those photos for free, they can get the high resolution images and print them and share them online or do whatever they want. All right, so to do that, what you need to do is first create that zip file. Now I've already created that zip file and I have another video that shows you how to create a zip file. Uh, it's pretty easy on a Mac. What you do is you just open up all of the photos and then you select them and you right click and select the compress option and that will create a zip file. Now I've already done that for this video. So now I'm gonna show you how you can add that zip file to uh, your website uh, by placing it actually up in the uh, file manager. So I'm going to select to insert an image, then I'm going to go upload. I'm going to, actually I take that back, I'm going to select the option to insert a file. I'm going to select upload and then I am going to take the zip file See if I can find it on my local computer. Oh, I guess I'm gonna to have to create that zip file. So let me just do that real quick. 
must have deleted it earlier, but I select all the files and I uh, click compress, right click and click compress all this wedding photos. And I put all of these high resolution photos into a zip file. Go ahead and close that out. Go back to insert, file, upload. I select those wedding photos and then that's gonna upload all of those wedding photos to my file manager in a single zip file. Wait for that to upload. Okay, now it's uploaded to my file manager and I can link to it from a photo. So I can actually link to it from anything that you can create a hyperlink to. So I can add, let's say for example, a button to my website by going over here and clicking add button. And then I can select the button size and then I can say, oh, I want to link to one of my files. I can select that zip file and then select the option to create a link from the button and then change the button text to say download photos or whatever. And then when somebody clicks on that, they're able to download those photos. Now, once again, maybe you don't want to allow somebody to access all of the high resolution photos for free. And in that event, you're going to want to set up an online store. And in this next section of the video, I'm going to show you how to do that and then how you can actually send people a link to deliver those high resolution photos digitally. Clicking on the dashboard link will bring you back to the dashboard of your website. And on the dashboard, you're going to find an app called Store. We call this the Store application. You can see now I'm back at the dashboard. I have the thumbnail to my site and I click on the store. Now, when you click on the store application, you're gonna see this little loading spinner. And in the background, you're being set up to accept credit card payments using WePay, which is owned by Chase Bank. And what happens is we send an email to the email address you used when you signed up and created the Web Starts account. And it asks you to confirm that you would like to accept credit card payments on your website. And then you're presented with the option to enter your banking information so they know where to make the deposits when you do accept credit card transactions. Uh, so all that happens in the background. The credit card company charges 2.9% and 30 cents per transaction, which is pretty standard. It's comparable to other services like Stripe and PayPal and the like, which are also payment options, which you can find under the settings section in the payments area. All right, but for this first demo, I'm gonna select the products tab up here. And you can say, see here that you can create your first product. And the product that I'm creating is gonna be like Jen and Johnny's wedding photos. I'm just gonna give it a generic name and then you can give it a description. You can give it whatever description you want. That's kind of a short description. You can really fill that area up. You can also select that text and make some of it bold or italic. You can even create links or call outs from there. In this next section, you can add some tags. That just helps people find this particular product if they're on your online store and they're looking by keyword in the search field. I'm not gonna populate that because I'm just going to send my clients a link to where they can purchase their photos. And I actually don't even want them to see anybody else's photos. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the next thing is it's asking me for uh, some photos of the product. You can create like a photo that is kind of a, a gallery or you can add separate photos like that. That's just whatever photos you want to represent the album in this case. Then you can enter the price, enter whatever you want. And if you wanna charge tax, you can do that. Just depends on your jurisdiction and stuff. Under SEO, that stands for search engine optimization. If you're creating a link that you want to be search engine friendly, you might want to explore that. Of course, you have a category option, shipping option. And then I wanna skip down to where it says hide from product catalog. Normally, when you create a product for sale using the store application on Web Starts, it's going to uh, display that product in your store in the catalog view. So everybody's gonna see all the products that you created. I don't want everybody to do that because I'm just going to send 
this couple a specific link so they can pay for their album. And I don't want couples to see each other's albums. So I'm just going to enable that feature. Now there's some other features here, variance inventory management. They don't really apply to what I'm doing. You can watch other videos if you want to discover what that's all about. I do want to enable the digital delivery because I'm going to send a link to that zip file after they make a purchase. So here it's going to say down, download link text. I'm just going to say click here to download. And then I'm going to attach my zip file. And then I'm just going to say click the link below to download zip file with all your photos. And you can provide whatever instructions you want. And when you're ready to create that product, just click create. Next, you can view what the page looks like that your couple is going to go to by clicking on that expand view icon. So this is what they're going to see. And when they add this to their cart, they're going to see this little checkout. And then they can click on checkout. And then they can enter their billing details. And then when they make their purchase, what it's going to do is it's going to send them an email receipt with a link at the bottom. And it's also going to send them to a confirmation page where they can download that zip file as well. I'm actually going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to go down to settings. I'm going to flip this toggle switch into test mode. If you put your store in test mode, be sure to take it out of test mode before you start collecting money because otherwise you won't get paid. And then I'm going to move back on over to my website. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter in my info like I'm a customer so I can show you exactly how this works. Just bear with me as I enter my information. We're in this, okay. And now I'm going here and I'm gonna enter in a fake card number. If you're ever trying to run a test transaction, just use 4242. Then you just wanna select the date that's in the future and any security code. And then finally, I'm gonna place my order. And then you should be able to see what your customer is gonna see here. All right, so here is a link to download that zip file. Let me move my face out of the way there. So you have this link to download the zip file. They can click on that and that takes them to where they can begin to download that. And then they also receive an email receipt. So they're gonna get that as well. All right, so that's how you set it up so that you can create an online store. Uh, there are some other features of web starts that you may find helpful. Like for example, if you don't, if you wanna have like a members only area or a specific viewable area you can do that in Web Starts as well using the membership app. I have a different video on that. You can check that out. Uh, but basically what that'll do is require people to sign up and create a username and password in order to access specific parts of your website. Um, once you've created all of your website, one of the great things about Web Starts is you just click add domain and then you select the domain name. So if I wanted this to be Adam's Photography or Adam's Wedding Photography, website.com. I click search. I see if it's available. If it's available, I click continue. Then all I need to do is select from one of the plans. I do recommend the business plan if you're in business, just because it comes with so many extra features. And when you do this, by the way, not only will that domain name start working in a matter of minutes or about a minute, uh, but also we submit your site to Google. So that helps you get found online. All right, that's just about it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer them. And also don't forget to tap the subscribe button and the like or uh, the uh, notification button to make sure you get notified when I release a new video. And of course, go to webstarts.com to create your very own free photography website. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.